Hey, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all of the other episodes, check the link in the description, stop by raprankings.com, or search Rap Rankings on your favorite podcast platform. And please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting to help us grow the channel and continue our journey as hip-hop's first and premier extreme podcast. And welcome back, everyone. Uh, joining us for the ninth consecutive season, ninth guest appearance, uh, folks, why do I feel like fucking Jimmy Fallon? <laughs> it's it's the well no jimmy Fallon is so welcome back everyone joining us for the ninth consecutive season uh ninth guest appearance we got the father cam is like ah oh, some great coke ah! you know right where's the fucking applause so now i'm now i'm behind the scenes jimmy I, Fallon. Where's, where's the fucking applause you fucking incompetent fucks All right here we go Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. I'll hit. I'll hit and the drop. I was. Back. I was getting. Uh, oh yeah! Welcome back. Welcome back. Go ahead, Mules. I didn't mean to cut you off. Cut me off. Of, me. of what? A welcoming welcoming him back. I said it. I said, oh, okay. welcome back." Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is Jimmy Fallon after the writer's strike. He's discombobulated. He's coked out. He doesn't know what's going on. Right. The writers but, don't want to come back because they know that, you know, he had them scabs working. Well, no, that's what happened to Drew Barrymore. They put her ass in the dirt because <laughs> he was like, oh, you want to do a show without us? All right. And now they're gone. But uh, Cam, I'm, I love every time you're here because you have that comforting, guiding wisdomly presence of a father so every time cam is here i think to myself i'll be okay as long as i love my daddy wow oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that oh was a uh, charles hamilton daddy's little girl <laughs> oh my god that shit's like an eight but it's, it's not cult time it's it's black milk time so it is black milk it is yeah it is. Uh, and speaking of Jimmy Fallon's cocaine problem, we're on track number eight. <laughs> overdose. <laughs> yes. Track eight. Overdose. Nice. Uh, produced by Black Milk, of course. Um, and before we give out ratings and everything, you know, Cam, you got the floor. You want to give us any background you have with this album and this artist and whatever you want to say? So uh, with Black Milk, um, I've been a fan pretty much since he did work on the Slum Village album. Uh, I got popular to band like a couple weeks after it came out. And I got this, I think I got this advanced, like downloaded it and then bought it on iTunes. Um, I was really looking forward to this one because I thought popular to band was one of the best produced albums the year it came out. And like, mm. I'm not always in love with Black Milk as a rapper, but the music is good enough to make me overlook that. I don't think okay. he's like uh, Mad. Wait, I don't on, think Mel, he's like Mad Lib, but Mel hit that. Uh, you know, my brother. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I was loading it, Cam. You're, you're, you're. Listen, we've been saying it all night, pal. My nigga, I'm glad you said this. Exactly. Not in love with him as a rapper, all the but like as a producer, though. You I know? mean, oh. at this point in the review, it's it's been known that I've described his rapping at this time because you know I do think on uh, No Poison, No Paradise, he grew into rapping in a way that he made a leap with production on this album. He made a leap with the rapping on that album. So yeah. You know, and, I think he's a better rapper now and has been for the last 10, 11 years than he is on this album. Hmm. And I agree with you. And I just think it's wild that this was probably the peak of like people talking about him and knowing about him. But like, yeah, the production stayed consistent up up until even this year. But like the rapping got better enough. I don't think he even reached like, you know, Dilla levels of a rapper, but like he he's good meat and potatoes at this point, and he's, he's meat producing. and potatoes at this point. But there is something that I've identified already in this review that I have to reiterate now because you're here, and 
it's what I've described uh, to Mel and the audience as the uh, in the booth rapping like you're bouncing up and down on a pogo stick flow. <laughs> Only oh, way God. I knew how to describe yeah. it. Um, when someone once asked me what I don't like about his rapping, because, you know, I mentioned in the background info, I have been listening to him since Sound of the City Volume 1. So yep. I'm like a day one Black Milk fan, but I really wasn't that big of a fan of him as a rapper. And if you know me, you know I can overlook, as long as the rapping is not bad, I can overlook average rapping if I really like the production. And I was saying in the background, Black Milk is one of my favorite producers to emerge in the last 20 years. Yeah. And I, as mid as the rapping gets on this from him, the production on this album is so good that I'm like, yeah, this is, I, this I, is the I moment have to live with it. <laughs> I was already a big fan of him as a producer. This was where he became like one of my favorites. I felt like he took that leap, as I noted with the, this project in the production and you know, it was just the production here. It was mind blowing to me, the rapping, you know, the thing about meat and potatoes is for me, like true meat and potatoes is nothing you're doing irritates me. Even if it's not necessarily high level, it's, it's maybe, you know, second gear rapping. Which, on this album, the tracks I don't have as takeaways, I, there's one that I don't like the beat and I don't like the rapping, but it would be because I don't like his rapping on it. All of the beats, if they had just a guy who didn't take anything away, would be takeaways except for uh, Without You, which I literally I gave that song a four. That's not now. a Black Milk beat. Yeah, and it's not, so... <laughs> But that's like it's like And that's British are, guy on a piano music that you know is post 911 07 which why is it why is it on this album which starts that suite with like blog era out stuff. to the matrix yeah, like I don't know I mean the sequence of it is strange but it's in there for that reason is to appeal to that crowd the blog era crowd <laughs> I I would I would call those people kind of the fucks honestly <laughs> that's like, a drop it, <laughs> like it, if you if you like without you i i question your entire mentality about music like what do you like about this and that, that that's just because i listen to this album again and i'm like i get through the first four the first three tracks and i'm like this is really good and then that stupid piano kicks in and I'm like, it almost derails the whole thing where I don't want to push through and then hold it down as eh. And then losing out kicks in and I'm like, okay, I'm in for the rest of it. Oh, well, I'm glad, I'm glad you noted this up top because I was a little worried, you know, going in, I'm like, do Mules and Mel have to have a handicap match against Graham as he, <laughs> you know, defends the integrity and the, the rap pen of a one black milk or black no. milk. No, black, black milk is um, he's he does not have the lows of Mad Lib, but he he shouldn't be rapping on these for the most part at this point in his career. It should have just he should have paired with somebody. He Man, should have paired with Elzai. I was just about to say if this because my thing about Elzai is I think he's one of the greatest, you know, just like wordsmiths and technicians in rap. And yet, you know, I don't really love many of his projects because I feel like the beat selection has been kind of iffy for me. Which the one definitive album I think he gets good production is the preface. Black Milk. And, oh, there's yeah. a lot of Black Milk on there. A lot of Black Milk on well, there. He did one like during the pandemic. I think it was like seven times up, eight times down or something like that. Oh, yeah. I remember that, that one. That project was one of my highest rated projects of that year. So I, I remember thinking that was a pretty good album. I haven't gone back to listen to it, though. Yeah. 
But, yeah, you guys don't have to do a handicap match against me on Black Milk because the story of this album is the production is amazing. It just, even though Black Milk isn't bad on all of it, it deserves a much better rapper. Like, especially with as deep as these instrumentals are, it's like, you don't, you're not that guy. You're just not that guy because... Here's the thing. I give I'm give my rating overdose. I give it eight plus. It's capped because Black Milk cannot match this beat at <laughs> all. Like the beat, I think is a nine nine plus level beat. I love this beat so much. Like I I I love the sample that runs through it. I love the synths. I love the bass. If I mean honestly, if you listen to my production and you hear that synth bass. Yeah, I kind of just heard that once, and I'm like, I want all my synth bases to sound like this forever. <laughs> it's just where I am. Okay. Um, unfortunately, you heard that uh, short quip I played up top. I wanted all my synth bases to sound like that, man. But, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't produce anymore, so I just let you know how it goes. Uh, okay. Um, Wolves, do you want to give your rating? Yeah, I give this a six plus. Shit. Ooh, okay. Um, <laughs> Cam, we, oh, look, it, it's not a handicap match. It's not. It's no, not a it's handicap not. match. All right, but I, I am going to give this a flat six. That's and fine. I will add, you know, if it were a handicap match, I think it, you know, it'd be like, you know, something along the lines of, you know, it'd be like, whoa, 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 Cam is like, the mules hit up the mail, and he, <laughs> the mules hit up the mail. And he, he said, he said, Mel, I just saw Cam is like score car. What are we going to do? And I turned to mules and I said, well, tell Cam is like, he's got to cram his likes up his Rudy Pooh candy ass. But we don't have to do that. Okay. Because it's not a handicap match. And the thing is, my my whole thing with this song in particular, we've been touching on it. He's just not that rapper yet. And it's funny you say, like, you were talking about Mad Lib. Um, he, he is a better rapper than Mad Lib, but I prefer Mad He's Lib. He's not because, as fun to listen to as Mad Yeah, Lib. right. I, w- I would agree with that. Mad like, Lib is lackier, and his worst stuff is more interesting, I guess, you know? Especially like, Mad Lib is Quaz. Like, yeah, Black Milk doesn't have that level of character. It, you know? Yeah. It, it's just like, you know, you talk about meat and potatoes. He is meat and potatoes. But the thing with him, there are different, you know, qualities, different cuts of meat, different types of potatoes. How are you preparing them? And it's like, this isn't spoiled meat and potatoes, but I think of like a banquet TV dinner. Like, I don't even that's look like, at this is a Salisbury potatoes, steak. Though. At this no, time, not, not at this point. Because of the fact he's meeting potatoes now, and he has been since 2012, the fact that he's doing things with his flow at points that irritate me makes him not meet in potatoes. Here, here is the definitive reason he's not meat and potatoes at this point. He does say hi in my Jimi Hendrix mind state. I, I, no, <laughs> I. I show you something great as Beethoven playing deaf with his earlobes closed. No. Can I just say, this is one of my pet peeves in life in general. Folks, For, for it's not going to be for the last time. I wish it would be, but earlobes don't, aren't the things that receive sound. Like, no. <laughs> that is not no. what the earlobe is. Please just consult an anatomy chart. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to give a lesson here, but just like, Understand? It's like when rappers talk about cuticles too. It's like, all right, look, man, have you have you ever even motherfucker? Have you ever even looked at your body? You know, it's like it. Anyway, um, Uh, the rapping is not top shelf, and you know this this pogo stick flow mool specifically in this song when he's like, you know, shout out to my niggas in high row. I go, I I know my my flow. flow. Still kind of psycho. Oh my god. Yes, that's the thing. Like, that's not meat and potatoes. You're too energetic for meat and potatoes. When I'm thinking meat and potatoes, currency, post odd future Damo Genesis, Larry June, you know, fucking God Fahim, that's meat and potatoes. 
they're not they're not doing like they're this is a, a bit of like doing too much like you're not falling back and just not getting in the way no. of things you're trying to get in the way of things a little bit and the it, it's just very frustrating because it's like the beat doesn't need all that the beat is doing so much work for you all you have to do is not mess it up and i don't get as irritated by that at the start but there's just there's just cringe lines here and it really caps it because I I really do love this beat and it's like yeah I can't go any lower than maybe I like a flat the beat. eight. That, that's the thing. Like there are songs on this yeah. album where he's not really doing anything, but I like the beat, so I like the song. We've discussed some of them already. But this is one where like I don't like the beat enough to put to up get with what it. he's doing yeah. on here. You know, mm-hmm. I like what about this beat is like it's kind of chaotic. I don't know how to describe it other than like, it sounds like it could be incidental music or like even maybe chase music from like an eighties action movie that would only air on TV on like Saturday afternoons. So it's just like, <laughs> I like it. I don't and like that's, it. A, that's why I'm like saying you don't need to do that much. Cause the beat is so frantic in the background. Why are you trying to like, catch up with your flow on it it's like give me no. fat cat on this shit man like yeah you know like you, give me something like that and black could, milk if if he would have just made uh producer compilation albums early on until he was a little more you know uh uh a little less rough around the edges on the mic you know he would have been putting out the best producer compilation albums of the 2000s yeah, well, I mean, I think if everything is like, even just like losing out Hell Yeah and The Matrix, that sets this up at a much higher cap because you've got better rappers doing the heavy lifting for you. Yeah. And even if you're going to throw a verse on it yourself, you'll have the support regardless and people will listen because they like those rappers. Yeah. Because, like, I, I have The Matrix at an 8, and it's like, yeah, because that beat's crazy, and Black Milk doesn't really have to do too much because you've got Pharaoh Mancha Sean Price on it. It's like, it's fine, as long as he doesn't actively shit himself. You know, um, I, you're right, Cam, because... Not just because they're all from Detroit, or not all, uh, Dilla, you know, Mad Web's not from Detroit, he's from L.A., but listening to this album this week, it felt like... A couple weeks ago, because like whenever quote unquote real rappers show up on this album, it's like night and day. It's like this is what these songs should be sounding like. Yeah. You know, like when um was it like when Guilty Simpson showed up on Champion Sound? It's like moments like that where I'm like, you know, when Royce and uh, Sean Price. Well, at least he showed up somewhere. <laughs> Poor Mules. <laughs> Just eating where chilies at the it? airport. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um. Those you know, chicken, it's it's those chicken crispers never tasted so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, folks, if we're talking chilies, get you some of them them ribs, of course. Uh, they they're they have ribs. a decent. You want to talk meat and potatoes? It ain't no like you know steakhouse steak, but like it's look. You want a cheap like twenty dollars steak that's not gonna be revolting? You know, it's okay. Their burgers fell with off. It. I had a burger from them like in oh, the last it, year. And something happened to them in the pandemic. I'm not sure they're, what. But. They're using different patties. Um, there, it's the fajitas and the tacos and quesadilla now. You know, the fajitas, that was my other go-to. I was going to say, get that. Maybe it was just the one in Peoria, but, like, it was so hit or miss, you know? Oh, like That's like, the, if you go when it's busy, you're going to get a bad plate every once in a while with the fajitas. <laughs> right. Because they're just going to be sitting there. <laughs> You know, I gotta say, this reminded me, and you know who has a really good fucking burger? It shocked me. Like, I found this out. uh, Well, no, you told me about that. No, I discovered this on my own, like, a month or two before I I moved. Uh, Fucking Denny's. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I got home and I'm like, yo, this shit is way better than it has any business being. Is this like I ordered it two nights in a row? Is this a new thing? 
It, it's no, the Denny's burgers have always been pretty good. It's just their sides aren't always great. And word, yeah, word. but like it. And it's not like a Waffle House patty melt, which is like the late night burger at this point. Because that. Yeah. Mm, that's good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> there are Waffle Houses around here, I think. So I get to eat Waffle House again. You know, I'm actually looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, Denny's Burgers, they, they, they've they always been good. But like, if I'm if I'm hitting up a place two nights in a row, I'm feeling something in my heart, you know? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, but check it out, folks. I've got. I don't say, mean cholesterol. I mean love. That so. that Buffalo Wild Wings lunch menu, though, that is legit. What are the it, prices looking like? It's like twelve bucks for an okay. entree, a side, and a drink. Oh, right, okay, I can rock with that because you know they well, prices at, every other time are astronomical. At a sit down restaurant, yeah, like, and you get. I think it was if you get the boneless wings, you get ten boneless wings and order a fries and a drink for twelve bucks. So good to me. Okay. Yeah. I might have to fuck with that. And I think they have those burgers on it too. Listen, Moore's put me on to them uh Buffalo Wild Wings burgos, and I gotta say they're pretty good. They're pretty How good. how's the no grease treating you guys though? It's treating me. Good. It's treating me pretty well. I've like, lost 10 pounds. The bloat is gone. Like, I don't know if I've lost weight. I know I'm healthier than I was. Yeah. I'm not having issues going to the bathroom. I'm not having as much GI issues in general and like digestive issues. Um, well, most I find I myself say, not falling asleep in the middle of the day style. Yeah, it's pretty good. I will say you and I are both old enough now. You might want to look into one of them fiber supplements, and that'll help with that too. Well, uh, fibo. Yeah, get the fibo. All I've heard from people that graduated with me in high school is like, "Man, if you take that, you feel so clean, so clean." <laughs> I've been drinking like 120 ounces of water a day. I feel as clean as I ever have. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, that yeah. water. Also, you got like. You, you, you'll you fuck yourself up just not drinking enough water. And I got to say, no carbonation in seven weeks. That shit is crazy. See, I, I can't do that. Like, I need the carbonation every once in a while just to get the system loosened up. Yeah, I'll, I'll say, you know, on the topic of needing that water, maybe one of the worst, like, periods of my, like, as far as how I felt, like there was like a week and a half, maybe a couple of years ago where I was drinking nothing but orange juice and Red Bull. And I felt so dry. Like, like bro, I, I had never in my life you? felt my bro, lack of water. The last three months, bro, you should have just been drinking <laughs> vodka with it. You might've actually felt good from being drunk. <laughs> you know, it was like, because I was on a, you couldn't have felt worse from just drinking that. Yeah, yeah, no, it it was just, it was like, I woke up one morning and I'm like, like, it was just like, <laughs> you know, it was like, I had never felt so dried out. And like, I told my friend Ting, she's like, the fuck is wrong with you? Like, drink some drink water. Like, like, drink like a gallon know? of water right now. <laughs> no, I'm good. Now, this was a couple years ago. I've been drinking a lot of water lately. Oh no, but like, that, that's what she told yeah. you. Like, drink a well, no, of right? Water and I right did now. too. I'm like, you're right. I needed to hear that. Like, she's like, you know, I'm like, I feel dry, and she's like, what have you been doing? I'm like, I've been drinking nothing but orange juice and I've been drinking and nothing like, but black milk. <laughs> you oh. know, <laughs> God, what yeah. what flavor would black milk be though? Like licorice? Oh God. I was thinking like charcoal. Everything is like d- toothpaste with charcoal Wait, in it now. Like so, it's so like, na- just like natural Pepto Bismol. Yeah. God, that would be so bad. <laughs> That's just Ipecac. You throw up right away. Yeah, you know what was look, that we're black milk now. that Lawler had, Mel? <laughs> We don't need to talk about that fucking racist, okay? Shirts are coming soon. This this Lawler, this it's Lawler good to be merch. the king. That in the Coca Cola font, we're gonna pick one of these AI generated images 
of while we're drinking black milk, and if that's going in the shop. All right. I forget, was King just the Diet Coke, or did he, like, eat McDonald's constantly, too? I cannot remember. No, it's just Coke. It's just okay. Coke. Uh, Jim Cornette's the fast food guy. Well, he's Wendy's, yeah. I knew that. Yeah, he likes Wendy's. Yeah, he likes scoping out the talent at a Wendy's to take back home, yeah. Oh, brother. <laughs> um... I knew he was in some weird stuff when he got on national television and it's like, I need to piss on Vince Russo's grave and I left my wife instructions. Like, what the fuck? What? What? Uh, you've, you've never <laughs> seen the end of the Screwjob episode of uh, Dark Side, Dark of, the Side of the Ring? No. There, there is a clip that goes around on Twitter every so often that's the credits of that. And he's like, he's saying it in his stupid voice. He's like, yeah, my wife has instructions. She's supposed to wheel me if I'm incapacitated so I can piss on his grave. <laughs> oh, brother. That's too much. That's that's an overdose. And, of, and uh, like, you're you know? both, yeah, that's an overdose. And, like, you're both the same guy. Like, you were Smoky Mountain and he was the Attitude Era. You both have, no, like... No, they're 18- not the same guy, okay? Let's be honest. The Attitude Era was the top era... It was the era when the TV ratings were at their top. Bro, listen, I don't want to hear about Smoky Mountain, bro, when the Attitude Era drew more viewers, casual fans, bro. See, what people don't understand, bro, is that people like Jim Cornette, they talk about things like Smoky Mountain Wrestling that only the Marks care about. Okay, how many how many viewers did Smoky Mountain Wrestling get, bro? <laughs> my god most that that is terrifying every time you do it i want you to know <laughs> like it's like um oh god what was the mel impersonation that i was shot oh his Stephen a smith <laughs> <laughs> i gotta keep you know it's one of those things i can't i, I can't always break it out you know, perfectly every time, but like no. it's there, it's in me. There's a lot. There's lots of different men in me. Pause. Okay, you know, it's just I gotta bring them out. You, you know, if I'm, it's it's like it's sort of like a restaurant. It's like they have daily specials. Sometimes I'm locked into certain people and I can do them, and then other days it's another person. So I gotta wait till they come back around. You know. Well, here's what they don't understand, bro. Black milk. Okay, bro. <laughs> Black milk is not entertaining, bro. Okay? This is entertainment. This is television, bro. Are you are you saying he's not entertaining? At least not up to our standards. At least not <laughs> up to our standards, bro. Exactly. Just like the father said. The great father. God. But yeah, I... Overdose at... Moles and Mel do not like it. They're Moles is close to liking it. Mel, pretty certain it's staying at a six forever for him. I like it a lot. You should check out the album Tronic. I I do think you should at least try it. Like track eleven, try. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. I think not liking that brother Black Milk is preposterous. That brother special. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, Stephen what, A. Mel. What what would you be taking if you didn't like uh, Black Milk, Stephen A? What 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 was he on? <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to bait me into uh, lay off the weed? <laughs> oh no, I was I was thinking um, Phil Jackson signing Lamar Odom to the Knicks. Oh fuck. <laughs> You can tell you something about the Phil Jackson Knicks stint. Like, it was hilarious. I mean, it was amazing. To this day, I'm trying to figure out, and, and sorry, Mules, you're going to have to pardon me. If it was just Phil Jackson being a fucking nutbag, or if it was more so the Knicks' bad luck. But I think it was a perfect marriage of both. It, it was both. <laughs> Are now you talking about Michael Jordan? No, hit my drive. We're back on track. <laughs> All right, fine, fine. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get that off. Here you go. All right, I'm sorry. We can't. In hip hop, you can't diss the Mecca, then, okay? Go, New York, go, New York, go. Go, New York, go, New York, go. We're back on track. Oh, 
We're back on track, folks. We are. <laughs> um, you know, let me hit this too while it's loaded because listen, you know, listen, my feelings on the New York Knicks, I, I want them to succeed, but yeah, they, they fucking suck. And you know, people's opinion on New York rap or whack milk or whatever, listen. If you don't want to hear the truth, you're in the wrong place. Okay. That's from Vince Russo himself. Oh, All right. that's. That's who I thought that was. What was that soundtrack, though? <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, Jim Johnston, formerly of WWE, the guy who made all those entrance themes for years. Legend, yes. He made Vince Russo, like, a custom entrance music theme for his podcast. <laughs> And I mean, I guess oh my God. when Jim Johnston makes entrance music for you, you can't tell him like, "Can we get another crack at this?" <laughs> you just take what he gives you. You just take it. You're not paying for it, so uh, you could hit that one more time, Cam. You get another taste of that uh, <laughs> Jim Johnston post WWE favors for a friend style. If you don't want to hear the truth, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> oh, he my mailed that God. the fuck in. Okay, he was just like, "Look, all right, what is this? A, a fucking what is it called? A prod crest here? <laughs> you know, he had uh, like a preset rhythm on his like board <laughs> Triton from 1997. It just went. You know what, bro? Where, where's yeah, the I was thinking, bro. <laughs> you know, everybody had entrance music, bro. But, you know, it's interesting. I didn't have entrance music in the WWF, and I was writing with Ed in the Attitude Era, bro. So what do you say? Maybe we do something where, you know, it's like a what if. What if Jim Johnston made Vince Russo entrance music in the WWF, bro? <laughs> My it's God. so goofy that wacky me i'm wacky mel i gotta pop like it's not good music no but it's it's ridiculous you gotta well, love it it's absurd it, it was such a throwback i was like was that like his m- bumper music for his radio show in the early 90s <laughs> like because that did not sound like podcast right that sounds either. like something from like the john Arezzi years definitely yeah but like that that comes on channel not. nine after the howard stern show like that type of stuff. That's new. That's like the last two or three years. Because he oh, used to come on to a karaoke version of Iron Man by Black Sabbath. And he'd come on, he'd be flexing. And now sometimes he'll still play Iron Man, but then he'll transition to this. The the quality God. of this reminds me of that that fucking meme of like Garfield and like 144p with like Pharrell's happy <laughs> playing in the back and like the worst quality you've ever heard <laughs> like that's what that was oh my god uh, you gotta love it though oh okay um, holy, holy shit I found the video video it's look up uh, WWE's Jim Johnston 2021 I'm still standing bro that's WWE. the name of the song Jim Johnston, I'm still standing, bro. <laughs> the bro being in there is amazing. Oh, okay. dear God. Hold on. <laughs> yes! The artifacting is in this, too. Oh, Okay. <laughs> what in the John Tesh playing round ball rock is this? Wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Mel, cue up that Give the Drummer Some by Black Mill. We already reviewed Oh my it. god. Alright, now if you're trying to make a link here between that and, and <laughs> that, that's I just a, heard that's that. A, now let's that's a hear minute bowl level stretch. Now let's hear Give the Drummer Some. Alright. Uh, this is what that Jim Johnson would sound like if it was me. Oh my god. The horn immediately. <laughs> oh god. Bro. It don't make no sense. How we still be making no sense. Uh, people go crazy when they drop this. When the bass hit. Uh, to the drum kicks. Get a drummer some. Look 
at me, I'm a hip hop podcaster, bro. Yeah, uh, drum and thumbs on the drum time. When they play this in the spot, watch the people go dumb. <laughs> Ladies and Moves, gentlemen, you sick fucking man. Russo. So, so that <laughs> that is exactly why you can't short out on brass section. You can't be using keyboard brass on something you're actually releasing. No. Good point. Good point. Because like, like that, that real... Bow, 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 <laughs> bow, bow, bow. <laughs> that's that. But, Look, that but, black milk, that's sterile. That's like the... That's like that digital funk. That Vince Russo, though, that's that real dirt. That's oh a mad mother. Get the fuck out of here, you motherfucker. Okay? <laughs> that's that mad lib. Play that mad lib Russo again. Shaboy Mad Lib Russo. Oh my god. Uh where is it? <laughs> gotta... Wait, Matt <laughs> Mad Lib Russo God. That's Wait, that's a... a a Lord Quas version of Vince Russo's voice. <laughs> if you don't want to hear the truth, you're in the wrong place. Oh my god. <laughs> if you don't want to hear the truth. You're in the wrong place. <laughs> like, you're yeah. in the wrong place, bro. Oh if you don't want to hear the truth, you're in the wrong place, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that listen, that should be a character in a movie. I would, I would dig it. Quasi oh, yeah. Russo. Oh my god. Um, let me let me just get these final. I gotta get these thoughts off about this overdose. Listen, uh, I, maybe I'm alone here. The most interesting part of the beat to me is actually at the end because. First this, listen to this album this week, I'm like, is that And I confirmed it was. Wait, oh was that God. was that cleared or not? I no. didn't want to oh, say Oh, did I just oh, I'm sorry. I I forgot we was okay. I I'm not that. I'm not bleep a hip hop trader. I forgot that this was I'm all right, I gotta bleep that. My bad, y'all. I sample snitch. Okay. I, I was about Same to say and then I'm like, I don't remember if this got cleared or not. Why do you think yeah. you know how much archival I could have brought in today if <laughs> if we were doing this? Uh, it's all good. I can fix it in post. Okay. Word. It was a it don't don't worry. He sampled a Street Fighter character. All right. There, don't worry about it. Okay. You can't you can't be sued by a fictional person. Okay. Uh. And and, but, and what was I was right. But yes. Uh, actually, playing the loop that he's chopping up at the end was really cool. We're now not here's going what, any further than that. <laughs> well, to me, it was I enjoyed it because it didn't. When he let it play out, I'm like, this doesn't fit. But I like this song because I actually flipped it myself. Like four years ago, like one of my fuck around beats. I'm not going to play it, obviously. But listen, I'm a big fan of this artist that can't be named or this Street Fighter character. OK, but it, it's 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 uh, I really like that part, you know. Um, But yeah, ultimately, the raps aren't there. He's, you know, boing, boing, springing all around the damn track. OK, Um, him rhyming Beyonce. Wheezy? What's going on? Wheezy. Snitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm not a snitch. I'm gonna. I'm censoring it. Okay. Oh fucking brother! I would oh. never do this to Black Milk or any other hip hop man. I wouldn't do that. I'm a sample man. I wouldn't do that. Okay. Well, uh, no, I would say now, rhyming now Beyonce with takes. Skeet on face is is outlandish. Okay. Yeah, uh, but then right after that, he does kind of follow it up with, uh, "What was it? I skeet on face while y'all beat up while y'all beat off to skeet tapes." That's like a line yeah, of sixteen-year-old rights. Yeah, he's he's dissing me, but he really is dissing himself. Okay, it's like, yeah, I, I may be touching me to that that prawn, but uh, you, you can't rap. So who's really the loser? <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, look. He he just uh he's not there as a rapper yet, but like you know, I mean, I'm always just telling me he would end up uh getting much better. He gets so, there. He does get there. Even, uh, as long as you get there, the beats have the, been there though. You know. Yeah, even on the next album, he improves a little bit. But like Mool said, "No Poison, No Paradise" is where it really kicks in. <sighs> well, Black Milk, thank you for paving the way for different colored milks. Uh, throughout the world, you know, Co- it, coffee it milk. was there. Strawberry <laughs> milk. <laughs> you know, I've uh, 
I've, I've, have I ever had strawberry milk? I don't know. I've had it back I, as quickly I, as I could. Oh, oh. We're snitching. We're snitching. Okay. Right, There's three white artists go. who are snitching. Cam, I'm sorry. There, I'm there sorry. Was, We're going to ah, have to. That was, uh, right there. The... That was one of the samples right, right there. Okay. The other this one, is... uh, we have two. These are white artists. I'm sorry, Cam. I. It, I mean, okay. we just can't keep him out. I, I don't, don't know what to say. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Paul, you need to do your job, man. How do you get in? The, it's up the, to the 50. You can bring oh. the in the Rap Rankins game. Okay, fair. <sighs> All right. Oh, really At least it slow? wasn't Jay. Really yeah. slow, Mickey? At least it wasn't Jay. He's elderly. You can push him We're out. all getting to the bag now. Oh my fucking god. Where no are you bag. learning this language? You guys. You mean... Let me not ask what he means, you guys, because I'm not gonna like the answer. Um Black Eyes. Well, that's better than what I thought Jesus. you were gonna say. Um Cam, did you have anything else to say about the record? No, I love the beat, and I'm not gonna sample snitch, so I can't really go into that. And uh black milk is serviceable at points but yeah he really needs i didn't to like it i didn't drink it rapper <laughs> damn it King. your thoughts are not required on this program i have intel i'm actually here for a reason no you're no you're not it was black food coloring it wasn't charcoal moles okay that wasn't a question it's just it's part of an open-ended discussion <sighs> You try to run a respectable hip hop podcast and you're getting crashed by Ain't no Rush. respectable. Oh. So you're listening to Jesse now. I love the guy. Oh, you wow. know he would love Jesse. They're I, both line steppers. Wow. Yeah, he's one of the good ones. Okay, yeah. all right. Um Jesse folks. doesn't deserve that. Jesus. <laughs> Black Milk Overdose Track 8. Cam is like the father. Uh, what was the mail? Uh, what was the mail? I'm to... No, you are not included in the roll call. You are not a part of this show. You are a, a, a unwelcome presence, and we don't appreciate you being here. And, you know, I'm just going to say it. It might be it might be high time for you to croak, you know? Also, Keith, not- there... King, there's a child in the next room. I don't think you're allowed to be within 500 feet of here. You need to leave. It's always time for a croak. Rav speak for Coke. Coke, Coke, Coke. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I'm I'm going to call the cops because, right, the bud's in the next room, and I'm pretty sure you can't be within. Yeah. So we're going to. Someone smoking weed? We're going to get out of here. And uh, the rest of the Black Milk review will, will proceed after. Uh, the record scratch uh cam thank you for joining us it's always yeah, a pleasure cam, thank you again hopefully next yeah. time you're coming on for uh something we can all agree is good rap yeah hopefully we've been missing a, we've been missing connections the past couple seasons actually no i don't think we missed since future that was it oh yeah that was uh, oh that was season is it the mixtape season? Are we talking about? No, uh, that was a uh, DS two. DS two, yeah. Okay, so that was season. That's seven. been a while. I think okay. we've at least one of us is connected each time. Okay. It's been a while. I think it's been a while since we've had all three have a connection on a track I've been on though. I need to do better. Oh no, you don't gotta do. You just gotta keep telling the truth. So I like, like Vince Russo. This is the place to speak your truth. All right, we can't be lying. That's for the world to do. Vince the Russo. Lies. What's that eating up to? All right, folks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, more review to come. Uh, oh, Cam, you want to plug anything? Before um, we go. Actually, I have a beat tape that just came out not too long ago. Space yeah, Jam some bars over it soon. No, Will you're you shut not up, King. bitch, and let our guest speak. I like white producers. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> There's racism, and then there's working that sism like a full-time fucking job. 
Well, if you don't want to hear Jerry the King Lawler, Space Jam, Firewalk with Me, The Secret Diary of Michael Jordan is out now <laughs> on my band camp. <laughs> that it is. All right, check it out. Cam is like, is one of my favorite producers. That's right, I said it. Okay. And then these is facts. All right. Mosin, Ed. Mosin, I'll connect. <laughs> well, you're... Jerry get the King Lawler is speaking for moles? I know. Moles and they'll connect. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't know. I don't just, I don't well, know. he's right. We connect. We think he's one of the great producers of the times right now. But Well, thank you, guys. You, you know, do you connect? Are you, are you asking the audience, like, at the end of the Tales from the Crypt movie from the 70s? No, I'm asking Lawler. Don't ask him anything! See, this is the Mool's... This, 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 this is that Mool's issue. He acts like I'm crazy. He likes to gaslight me. But, you know, I'm the only one serious around here trying to get these sons of bitches out of here. He's always talking about, oh, maybe Jay has a point. Maybe Lawler has a point. Stop letting them think they, 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 they belong here. So now I sound racist. Now I sound like Lawler. <sighs> that means you sound good. Uh, yeah. Mool's, Mel, and Jerry connect. I'm I'm leaving. I'm, we all love Cam is light. Going back to work. I got a DoorDash. And okay. Cam is light and knows that we love puppies. We're we're getting out of here, folks. Thank you, Cam. Thank you. See you for track nine and the rest of the album, everyone. Thank you guys. Have a good one. Not you, King. You right, need Cam. to leave. What the hell did I do to you? Many things, mainly your commentary over the years. <laughs> And on that note, we're out of here. Hey, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all of the other episodes, check the link in the description, stop by raprankings.com, or search Rap Rankings on your favorite podcast platform. And please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting to help us grow the channel and continue our journey as hip-hop's first and premier extreme podcast.